I reviewed a lot of TVs this year and one of the most popular questions I get in the comments is which TV to get, especially in my comparison videos, TV A or TV B. So in this video, that's exactly what we're going to talk about. Stick around. Perfect. Hey guys, it's the Villaman here, home theater enthusiast and all around tech lover. And on this channel, we're all about the audio and video gear that entertains you. So you can find the best devices and get the most out of them. So if you're into that, then hit that subscribe button and come along for the ride. So in this video, I wanna talk about the 2019 model TVs and how they relate to each other, which one I think is best in each category among all the TVs I reviewed so far this year. So far in 2019, I reviewed the mid-tier and high-end TV, so that's what I'll be mainly focusing on. And to start things off, I want to talk about which TV I think would be good as a mid-tier TV. This will include everything from OLEDs to QLEDs and what I like about the respective technologies in the TV that they were implemented in. Now starting things off are four TVs, the Samsung Q80R, the Sony X950G, the Vizio P-Series Quantum X, and of course the TCL 8-Series Mini LED TV. Now all four of these TVs have their relative strengths. Now starting with the Vizio, the Vizio is very bright and it's very feature packed also at the lowest price of all of these four TVs. But that also comes at the cost of panel uniformity issues and backlight performance issues, so it may not be the best choice for you. Now the Vizio is one of the only TVs in the US that supports all the major HDR formats, that's from HDR10, Hybrid Log Gamma, to Dolby Vision and HDR10+. But that comes at the cost of panel uniformity issues and also backlight performance issues like flickering, for example. Next up is the Sony X950G, which is also feature packed but comes in at a cost that we'll call reasonable. It has great picture performance and supports Dolby Vision, HDR10 and Hybrid Log Gamma. Now this is one of the best LCD TVs I've reviewed this year and has a great picture but it comes at the cost of having a reflective screen and also having a full array local dimming backlight count on the lower side. Then we have the Samsung Q80R which is another full array local dimming LCD TV and it supports HDR10, HDR10+, and of course Hybrid Log Gamma. But it doesn't support Dolby Vision which I think is a big deal because there's a lot more content available in Dolby Vision than HDR10+, by far. But this TV is also great for gaming because it supports FreeSync which results in less tearing and stutter during gameplay. Then we have the TCL 8 series mini LED TV, which is brand new to the market. The colors pop and the contrast is great and it handles motion very well, but the resulting black crush in the image is a real blemish, I'd say. So if you're predominantly watching movies, I would definitely recommend the Sony X950G in this price category because it is absolutely great for watching movies and the games very well also. The interface is great, it has a lot of streaming apps available to you, so you won't be in need of content. Next up, I'd actually recommend the Samsung Q80R because that TV also has a great picture, but if you are actually primarily gaming on your TV, then I'd actually recommend the Samsung Q80R first instead of the Sony X950G. Below those, I'd recommend the TCL8 series because it has a good picture now, but there is definitely room for improvement. As I said, the black crush and backlight management can be improved and when those are fixed, I think it will have a great picture. But until then, it's the newest of the TV, so it's the least likely to see a price reduction anytime soon, so that's why it's third on that list. Last up is the Vizio P-Series Quantum X and even though this is the least expensive TV in the category, I think the TV doesn't necessarily live up to the specs. So. Whether that be backlight flickering with certain picture settings or the excessive blooming in my opinion, I think it could be better. Alright, so let's talk about TVs on the higher end of the scale. First up is the A8G from Sony. Now this TV has a gorgeous picture which is also known to be accurate but it comes at the cost of a sluggish UI, a bad remote and a gimped HDMI port. So Sony purposely skimmed on those features because the X950G has better versions of all of those. 
Then we have the Samsung Q90R, which is a great TV. It has support for HDR10, HDR10+, and hybrid log gamma. It has some great gaming features like FreeSync, like the Q80R, and also a lot more local dimming zones because it's on the higher end of the scale. The anti-reflective coating on this TV is also known to be sorcery, so there's also that going for it. But I have an issue with Samsung's lack of support for Dolby Vision. You might not find that to be a big deal, but I do personally. The TV gets super bright and the local dimming zones help with the contrast performance, especially in a dark room. So whether you have it in bright or a dark environment, it will have a great picture. Then there's the LG C9 OLED, which also has a gorgeous picture and is the only TV that has HDMI 2.1 ports. All of them. It also has some of the lowest input lag of any TV you can get and a bunch of HDMI 2.1 gaming features like auto low latency mode and variable refresh rates. So it's kind of stacked, but personally I wouldn't recommend using your OLED as a PC monitor. For gaming on PC, sure, but not as a monitor in general. Too many static elements, which may lead to potential burden. And then of course is the Sony A9G Master Series TV, which is basically the A8G turned up to 11. It has a better remote and more fluid UI and isn't gimped in the HDMI port department. It also has a more advanced acoustic surface which produces sound from the screen and can act as the center channel in your surround sound system. But all of that comes at a price, a pretty high price. So how would I rank these TVs? Well, on the bottom of the list would be Sony's A8G OLED because I think it is a great TV. It has a great picture, don't get me wrong, but it's just too gimped in certain key aspects to actually be any contender with any of the other TVs at the same price. It just, it just wouldn't work. So maybe for the next one, Sony, don't gimp key features just to not cannibalize sales of your higher end version. Next up is the Samsung Q90R and one of the biggest things I take an issue with, as I said, is the lack of Dolby Vision support. Now, if you have a room on the brighter side and actually do a lot of gaming and don't want to potentially risk burning on an LCD TV, then the Samsung would move right up to number one because it's a great gaming TV with its FreeSync support, but it just doesn't have the same quality of picture that the LG OLED does. So the next TV will effectively reveal what TV I would recommend the most of any TV. And so the one after the Samsung Q90R would be Sony's A9G OLED TV. Now this TV has a gorgeous picture and Sony knows how to do a picture, but it's just too expensive. It doesn't have as good of a gaming feature set as the LG OLED or the Samsung QLED, but it also has a better picture than the Samsung QLED. So it's above it. But as I said, the price is a really prohibitive factor on this TV, so even though you get all those features, you definitely pay for it. So by default, next up we have the LG C9, and this TV has a gorgeous picture, and I hope you've seen my comparisons, both the picture and gaming comparisons, when I compared it to the Samsung Q90R, and it has an absolutely gorgeous picture. And the gaming feature set has been great since launch, but it's getting even better with HGIG implementation just recently. It also supports HDMI 2.1 and all those features, so enhanced audio return channel for your surround sound, auto low latency mode for gaming and VRR, variable refresh rate for gaming also. So as I said, it's stacked. But being an OLED, there will always be the risk of potential burning. Even though it is a small possibility, it's still a possibility. And some people just don't want to have to consider that possibility when they have their TV. So that's also, you know, on the downside. Now, I've had an OLED for over three years and I haven't had burning. So there's that. But it all depends on the person and how you use your TV. But if you watch varied content, you shouldn't have an issue. But some people just don't want to have to even think about that. So there you go. Now, I could have gotten a lot more in depth on my reasons why I like these TVs, but I don't think anyone wants to watch a 30 minute video on this. So if you want to see more on these TVs, I have reviews for all of them uh, linked in the description below. Also, if you want to actually buy any of these TVs and help support the channel at the same time, then I've left affiliate links in the description below where you can buy them and help support the channel at the same time and no extra cost to you. Thank you for your support. 
Let me know your thoughts in the comments. What TV are you in the market for? Don't forget to like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching and until next time. This has been your friendly neighborhood villa man saying peace.